All right, guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today we're in the dead of summer. It's starting to really get hot. Unfortunately, I have to film this video at night because these grid ties run like madmen making all kinds of noise during the day, so there's no way I could film them. But I wanted to talk to you guys about how I put together a DIY cheap cooling system for these grid ties. For those of you that don't know, these budget grid ties work extremely well but they are susceptible to basically popping. So generally speaking, there's only two real killers, well, three technically, of these grid ties. One is people put too much power to them. Stay below 75% of the rated wattage, and generally speaking, you'll have a lot less trouble because they won't run as hot. Now, yes, I know they should run what they say, but they don't. Number two is out of our control electrical issues such as major surges going through the power lines something crazy surging in your box just out of our control stuff so that's two the third one and the one that normally happens is they just plain get too hot they just get too hot i mean they get super super hot and they actually break down degrade now all electronics when exposed to extreme heat levels will wear them out the cooler you keep them the better they'll run, the longer they'll run. That's why they make things like laptop coolers. That's why the new like iron phosphate batteries have cooling systems in them. The, the concept of electronics or anything like that that's temperature regulated will work better, period. Now, with these things heating up, for most people, if they were inside their house like they are in ours, most people keep their house air conditioned in the summer. We do not keep the living room area and the dining room and kitchen area air conditioned. Generally, I'm the only one home and most times I'm outside working during the day if I'm not out on a job site somewhere. Now, we do have rooms that we air condition, but this is not one of it generally. So I need a way to keep these cool because I want them to last as long as possible with inflation hitting everything else, which I'm sure you guys already know. These have gone up almost $50 a piece. So replacing them is very costly. So if I can get an extra year out of them or two years out of them or whatever, I want to do that. And it's worth a small investment to do so. Now that small investment was USB fans. Now, I went on there and just looked for the cheapest ones I could find. I think I paid like seven or eight bucks a piece for these. Different colors for some reason cost different amount, but they were flash selling them, so I just bought them. I will send you the links to where I bought these, but as you can see, I've got 2D Freedy. I've got three colors. I mean, now, these are not the most powerful fans in the world. I actually was going to do a strip and do computer fans or mini fans, but this just end up being a cheap easy option and then all I have to do is take the USBs plug them into multi-port power bricks and plug them in they use almost no power I could put them on a light timer and have them kick on just the hours of daylight but they use so little and the other thing that surprised me when they showed up is one they have RGB I don't I don't need light up fans but they have it but they're also three position three speeds so you've got low You've got medium, and then you've got high. Now that's pretty good. Now, having all three of these running, they got nice fancy lights that flash for a minute too. Does make a little noise, but the grid ties make way more noise. Once you get used to it, you don't even hear them running back here. All I hear is saving money, saving money, saving money. That's all I hear. Now, this is not the best setup. This was just something I threw together to keep these cool. Now, when I move these to the tiny house, I will have these moved out and there will be a dust filter behind this because dust can get inside these and mess them up. But it will pull through the dust filter and blow cool air across and out. But these will be elevated out. And I'll take you guys off the tripod and show you what I mean because right now, these are above them blowing down it. It'd be better if they're blowing up between the back and the front and the sides all at once, just because of the shape and configuration of these fans. Now, one of the reasons why I hurried up and did this is 
this grid tie, the bottom fan has stopped working. This grid tie, the top fan, has started to kind of catch. So I tried to clean it out real well with a toothbrush and some condensed air for like computer keyboards and stuff, but the fans are failing. The fans end up failing in these things usually because they end up getting gummed up with stuff. They're not high quality fans, guys. I was buying these back in the day for like a hundred bucks. I mean, you can't expect miracles. Yes, they should make them better. I agree. But the reality is, it is what it is. But, you know, seven, 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 twenty-one dollars. I had the power bricks already sitting here. So, for twenty-one dollars, I'm cooling them. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take the time to do the uh, pictures of it because I've been busy. But I've been taking measurements on these. And they had been running about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit in the height of the day. Now, the way I've got my panels set, the height of the day here is about 2 o'clock for me. I've got trees on both sides, so that's about when they're really getting blasted hard by the sun. With these fans blowing on an even hotter day, because the second day I was measuring them, it was even hotter and even more intense sound with less cloud cover. The fans blowing on them had them down 10 degrees, 12 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. That is a huge drop, a huge drop. But where it actually comes in really well is at the end of the day, they're 10 degrees cooler than they do as they go down the hill cooling off, they cool down faster. So when I came home tonight, and the sun had just gone down, they were just flickering their red light shutting off. They were ice cold to the touch, there was no warmth. So that in itself is gonna make these last a lot longer. Now I will have to watch the dust in the house being pushed basically through these. But with the fans starting to fail on them, it was only a matter of time before we were gonna end up losing one of these. And I'm not saying this is the perfect solution, but it's a small price to pay. If you can pull these to go an extra year that they wouldn't have gone before, you just saved yourself some money. And all through that time, they're making you more money as they feed power back into the grid and offset our home's usage. So let me get you down off the tripod and I'll show you what is bad about this setup and how it can be improved. All right, guys, I've shut the fans down so you can hear me a little better. But what I want to show you first off is how I mounted it because this is literally super temporary. So you got just a screw there and a screw there and all I did was drill the base plates and put some really short roofing metal screws in. Now let me show you the quality consistence. Look how this one's like almost flat but these both push forward. That is the inconsistency in the factory so don't expect miracles with these things. But another thing I want to show you is, you see how the grid ties are way back here and the fans are way up here. So granted they're blowing plenty of air here to keep it cool, but it would be much better if these were directly on top of these with spacers to allow air to flow over the back, up the ribs on the side and the front, as well as through the actual old fan holes. Now. My intention is to build an entire box to do that in the tiny house. And like I said, there'd be a filter here and a thin filter on the top to also catch dust. There would be a washable filter and that would keep dust out of the system, but let the air push continuously to cool these down. Now, when you look at this system, it isn't high tech. It isn't anything special. But it is important that if you're going to do something like this, you do it more like this with multiple power bricks. Because when you buy the strips that have multiple USBs, they start sharing the power. So you would be getting less speed out of each fan by doing that. Whereas in these type of bricks, they each get the full amount of power from the brick. That's an important thing to note because I had them on a strip and they were not blowing that hard. Now. I'm going to put you a little closer because I want you to see how this thing blows because it's actually way stronger than I had anticipated. So there's low, there's medium, there's high. And it's got its, 
It's got its pretty little lights in there, its little RGB light in there. I just found that humorous. But you can even hear as it shuts down. They're actually pretty powerful little fans. I think I might get one or two more for our hammock camping for our other channel, Our World Outdoors. Mounting this in my hammock might be nice at night runoff power pack. But honestly, I mean, if you just look down in there at how dirty they get, I mean, it's really bad. I mean, granted, my house is pretty dusty anyways, but about every, I don't know, week or so, I take a toothbrush and some keyboard cleaner and clean them up. And this is what they look like just a week later. These kind that are actually recessed do a way worse job than the ones over there with grills. So looks like tomorrow I need to clean them again. But as you can see, this will clearly show why it needs the filtered box system. But I think it'll also show you guys how you can make these last a little longer if you want to. Because much like everything else, prices are going up, guys. We have to accept it. I've talked before about when these start popping, I'll probably be changing to, you know, something a little more heavy duty. But there's no reason to spend money if you don't have to. These could still run for many, many more years. They've already been running for many, many years. And have saved me a heck of a lot of money on my electric bill. I have no complaints and I'm definitely not afraid to invest $21 into keeping them cool. And there is other ways. You could put all three of these in a line and just do it with two fans. One here and one at the top blowing across all three. And it worked too. But just some ideas. If you guys have been working on cooling down your systems, whether it's on grid or off grid, whether it's your grid ties, your charge controllers, your batteries, let me know what you're working with or link videos. I'd love to see what kind of projects you guys are getting into. And until then, I will see you guys in the next one.